So we'll just take a look at the exogenous and the endogenous pathway of cholesterol transport. And we'll start with the exogenous pathway. So this is really talking about the food that we eat that contains fats and how we actually ultimately get the cholesterol. So what happens is we this is going to represent our ileum, which is the final portion of our small intestines, right? So what happens is the cholesterol and triglycerides from the foods that we eat are broken down into fatty acids, cholesterol, and um, glycerol, which will then be packaged into our calomicrons, and this transport is mediated by the Neiman Pick C1-like transporters at the brush border of the ileum. So the uh, calomicrons, uh, calomicrons rather, have been uh, packaged into these vesicles, they have moved into the lacteals of the lymphatics, they then move into the bloodstream where they can be acted on by lipoprotein lipase on the surface of the vascular endothelium. This will allow for the um, triglycerides which are packaged within the chylomicrons to be liberated, they move into the adipose tissue and the muscle, leaving behind a chylomicron remnant which has um, very little triglycerides left and predominantly now has the cholesterol esters. Then by virtue of its ApoE surface protein it will bind to receptors that recognise the ApoE protein and cholesterol can be liberated and it can either be stored in the hepatocytes or it can be oxidised as bile acids or it can be excreted in the faeces uh, uh, when we have the release of bile. Then this cholesterol can actually also enter the endogenous pathway. So cholesterol that has made its way from the exogenous pathway can enter the endogenous pathway, but we also have in the endogenous pathway the synthesis of cholesterol. So that starts with our acetyl-CoA plus our acetoacetyl-CoA, making our HMG-CoA, which is then converted into our mevalonate. Uh, from mevalonate, it turns into our uh, farnesyl polypeptides, then into squalene. From our squalene, moves into lanisterol, and then we get our cholesterol here, which can obviously be inserted either into the plasma membranes, uh, depending on the environment that we're dealing with, it can either be used for uh, rigidity or it can be used to maintain some form of flexibility within the plasma membrane. This cholesterol will then be packaged into very low density lipoproteins, again in the same manner moves into the lymph, then into the bloodstream, acted on by lipoprotein lipase to remove that triglyceride. These then move, that triglyceride from the VLDL will move into the, uh, the adipose tissue and the muscle once more. Now instead of forming a calomicron remnant, we form from VLDL LDL. Our LDL can then be taken back up into the hepatocytes via LDL receptors and again the same thing can happen to our cholesterol. We also have this thing here called reverse cholesterol transport and that's involving actually as mentioned here cholesterol turnover. So the cholesterol from our peripheral tissues is packaged into high density lipoprotein. This can then be either transformed into very low density lipoprotein by transporting the, the cholesterol esters present within HDL, or it can be trans, uh, transferred into low density lipoprotein by again transferring those cholesterol esters, and that's mediated by this cholesterol ester transport protein, and our LDL can enter the liver again, um, and the, this sort of just continues.